Wrestling with the Past, hosted by Jason Nup. Join Jason as he reviews classic wrestling footage from the golden era of the WWF. When our biggest childhood fear was anyone from the dreaded Heenan family capturing the precious World Wrestling Federation gold from our red and yellow savior, Paul Hogan. There were rowdy pipers, snookas who superflied, animals with green tongues, Russian Volkovs, sheiks of iron, a demolition that could axe and smash things to bits. <laughs> it was a glorious time to be alive. It was a time to rock and wrestle. When a video coliseum fulfilled our childhood world with excitement and wonder. And now, the host of Wrestling with the Past. Give it up, give it up, give it up for Mr. Jason Nup. What's up, guys? Jason Nup, New Age Revolution, down here in the cave with a paperback episode of Wrestling with the Past. Today, today we take a look at a WWF Arena program from Christmas 1983. So this would probably cover November, December arena shows. Uh, I don't think that there is a, you know, I, I'd have to go, this is, this is program 107. I'd have to go back and see what program 106 was. Um, I doubt it was like, you know, the Thanksgiving episode, uh, Thanksgiving issue. So I'm sure that this is the November, December uh, program for the arena shows the holiday season of 1983. So this is the year before the uh, major WWF explosion. Uh, but we'll go through this program, and of course, of course, with the programs we have the special arena report inserts, the match cards that I have been collect not collecting, but I got a ton of them uh, in one batch, and I just love them and. Luckily for me, they're all from the Rochester War Memorial. Uh, I decided to review this book because it is a, it was a present. It was a present from uh, from G.I. Joe Ron. Well, last time he was here, you saw the video. He dropped off a package for my birthday, and inside was this delicious World Wrestling Federation Arena program. You know, the kind that you'd bug your parents to get you for five bucks or whatever at the uh, at the show. Uh, we got Captain Lou on the corner. On the corner. Oof. We got Captain Lou on the cover. Uh, holiday greetings from the captain. That's kind of weird. You know, Captain Lou at that time, late 83, a horrible bad guy. But he is uh, apparently wishing all of us a Merry Christmas. Got him dressed up in a crappy, cheap Santa outfit there. And uh, let's let's get into the book. Let's spread this out. There we go. Uh, you can see, you can see all the goodies. Right there on the uh, on the left uh, left corner is the official WWF baseball cap. The now I have been into the trucker style hats, and of course these weren't called trucker hats back then; they were just hats. Uh, but you know, since we've since we've modernized and gotten cool, we have to put you know a name on everything. And and now that the mesh hats have come back in style, we've decided to call them trucker hats. I would absolutely love to get my hands on this official WWF mesh back trucker cap, but I do not think that I will be paying $7 for it uh, as advertised here in the program. Uh, I would love one. I would love one. Absolutely love one. I don't have any vintage WWF trucker hats. I have a Rowdy Roddy Piper one that I think, I mean, it's certainly not you know, like an original WWF catalog hat. It, it's probably something that somebody made recently, but I would love this. This, uh, I, I haven't even begun to, like, search for it. I don't, I don't know uh, who would have it on eBay or how much it would be. But it was only $7 back then with uh, $1 shipping and handling. How about that? I don't know if you guys can see it. I can try to adjust the camera and get a little zoom. Yeah, it's too much. But anyway, uh, $1. One dollar shipping and handling, right there. So for eight bucks, you would get the uh, you'd get the hat. 
Below that, the official WWF belt buckle. Again, another grail. You know, probably a, a wrestling grail. You know, I mean, where where are these things? And and how do we know that they're official? Uh, you know, they can they can screen print the hats nowadays. But the belt buckles, wow. For, so for five bucks and that good old one dollar shipping, how does that happen? Like with shipping, like to ship a package, was it really a buck in 1983? Because you know, you know the WWF doesn't want to lose money here. Was it really one dollar for shipping? That's amazing. Official WWF brass plated belt buckle to go with your trucker hat. Here we have Captain Lou. I don't know what this story is. I have not looked through this, so we're looking at this for the first time. Uh, Captain Lou Albano says, I'm the number one Santa Claus. All right. Uh, maker of good tidings, Captain Lou. So I don't know what this story is. Uh, maybe it's him just writing it and it says right here, I'd like to wish. Holiday greetings, Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. Put it all together and you get Captain Lou Albano. Why Lou Albano? I am the maker of champions. I know my business very well, and I'm here to wish all of the fans a good holiday season. Wow, that's weird. A little good guy vibe from Captain Lou. All right. A dream matchup is the next... Uh, did I skip a page? No, I didn't. A dream matchup. Tito Santana... No, that's Bob Backlund, sorry. Uh, what does it say? As a general rule, champions do not usually face each other or face another title holder for various and unexplained reasons. So this must have been... So they're reviewing a match between then-world heavyweight champion Bob Backlund and then-intercontinental champion Don Morocco. And they're highlighting the match from New Haven, Connecticut. Those two actually did have... Uh, some good matches while both were champions. It was a champion versus champion uh, non-title match, or, or maybe they made uh, Backlund's title up for grabs. But these two had incredible matches. Don Morocco, I've always said, is a is a big favorite of mine. So they're just highlighting the match between the two there. Uh, here's we okay. So we here's here we've got some some more awesome advertisements. The deluxe WWF sport shirt, which is just a golf shirt, looks like a a two button you know golf style polo shirt. Fifteen dollars, one dollar postage, and below below that is the WWF windbreaker for only fifteen dollars and one dollar postage. Man, could you imagine getting this stuff back in the day? and still having it in some shape or form. You know, I'm sure the windbreaker would be all tattered and torn. Uh, a Superstar Strikes Again, yes, 1983 saw the uh, masked superstar being featured a great deal on WWF television, having a uh, main event run with Bob Backlund around the uh, house show circuit. Uh, then, a, then a little feud into 84 with Andre the Giant, uh, where Andre wanted to keep trying to unmask him. That's about all Superstar, uh, did until later. Uh, 86, he came back as a machine. Uh, and then, of course, Demolition Axe. But, uh, yeah, the Masked Superstar's big, uh, you know, dastardly deed was when he, um, re-injured... K. Fabe re-injured the uh, the neck of Eddie Gilbert on television. He he did a uh, he did the um, swinging neck breaker on Eddie Gilbert on WWF TV after Gilbert had been injured legitimately in a near death car accident, uh, broke his neck in '82 or '83, and then when he finally came back. Uh, they they played that up. They played the neck injury up, and it it was legit, very legit. He has a, he had a horrible scar underneath his chin uh, for when they like you know cut into his neck. But uh, uh, Mass Superstars, uh, you know, big bad guy push was when he uh, gave the swinging neck breaker to an already compromised Eddie Gilbert on the hard arena floor. So this is just a little feature against uh, with him and Bob Backlund. Uh, the advertisement here is for Victory Magazine, which uh, within the first 
early first quarter of 1984, they dropped the Victory magazine, and it became the World Wrestling Federation magazine. Victory magazine had, I think, two issues. Maybe one issue. Um, and then it became WWF magazine. Rightfully so. Um, in fact, Victory magazine had a was, was the show that followed Buddy Rogers' corner and then was the precursor to Piper's Pit. It was called Victory Corner, and it was a guy by the name of Rick DeBoard, who was an editor of Victory Magazine, and he, for some reason, with no wrestling talent or no acting talent, he, he would host the show. And it was terrible, and it, that lasted about three or four episodes, and then Roddy Piper like literally kicked him off the set, and it became Piper's Pit. Uh, for some reason, the, the pages turn colors now. Now we have some weird white pages with pink <laughs> pink photography. Uh, Ring Ramblings. Santana presents the challenge. So here they are uh, talking about the um, upcoming series of matches between uh, Tito Santana and the Intercontinental Champion, the Magnificent Morocco. They did go uh, around the horn, as they say, with Tito Santana finally becoming the new Intercontinental Champion right around the 1st of uh, 84, uh, winning the belt from Morocco in a non-televised uh, Boston Garden house show. I have seen some clips of the match. They did show clips of the match on WWF television, but it was, you know, you could tell the camera is not, not like a hard camera. It's just kind of, you know... I don't know. It's it's not a made-for-TV broadcast. But uh, Tio Santana eventually wrestles the Intercontinental title away from Don Morocco. And then what I'm noticing by watching the shows is that Don Morocco goes on a little hiatus. He, uh, he leaves uh, the WWF for a, a period of time. After losing the Intercontinental title, uh, he goes away. And we don't see him on WWF TV for a while. Um, I know he's back in '85 uh, for the you know for the run with uh, Ricky Steamboat and some stuff with Hulk Hogan. Um, but where was he in '84? We'll find out. I don't know where he is. I don't know when he's coming back in '84, and I'm already up to April of '84. I have this. I have this uh, official 1984 calendar. I think, yeah, it's definitely tucked away somewhere here. But I have that calendar, and those are great. You know, those were those are awesome. Really, really nice full-size calendars. Great pictures. Good for autographing if you're ever going to, you know, if you want to work on a project. Uh, some of the guys are still alive. Uh, next page. Next page. Some of the coolest stuff ever that we don't see anymore. These t-shirts. Incredible. We will never find these t-shirts anywhere. I can assure you they are, they are gone. But uh, look at them. Look how cool they are. They are... Look at that. Those are like Bob Back. Where is that? And, and look at him. That doesn't look anything like Bob Backlund on the T-shirt. Let's take a closer look there. Uh, I guess it does. I, looking at it from afar, it looks like Brian Pillman. But okay, so so we've got the uh, we've got the T-shirts. We've got the uh, I, I like that Rocky Johnson WWF logo one. And then of course Rocky Johnson has his own Sergeant Slaughter, the Cobra Clutch. Shirt, uh, Superfly Snooka has a shirt, Andre has one, Don Morocco has one, Bob Backlund. Seven dollars, ladies and gentlemen. One dollar shipping and handling. Seven dollars for the official WWF t-shirts. What a gold mine blast from the past. Grail. These t-shirts would be all faded and beat up and stinky and armpit stained. You know somebody's got one somewhere. All right, what else have we got here? Ah, uh, the posters. We've got the order form for the posters. Incredible. 23 by 34, so that's full-size poster. I think full-size poster is 24 by 36. Uh, yeah, just action shots. Cool stuff. Again, imagine. Imagine. And, and you know, tons of... I think probably some older kids would take advantage of the ordering. Because, I mean, look, in, in 1983, I'm, I'm 7. Right, so I have no interest in a poster. Um, I'm certainly not ordering it myself. So I could see like some, you know, 15, 16 year old kids in 1983 definitely having these on their wall. 
especially at five bucks each. I assume that they were sold at arenas as well. I know there was a, uh, I know there was an, a, a, a merchandise table when I started going uh, to shows in like 84, 85. I know there was always an arena merchandise table with, you know, awesome stuff that your dad wouldn't buy you. Uh, a feature on Rene Goulet, No More Mr. Nice Guy, it says. Uh, let's see. It took nearly 16 years. Before, so I guess Rene was a face for a while. Uh, he made his previous visits to the World Wrestling Federation in 1971 and 1978. It was followed following his last stint where he changed his attitude and initiated an unpredictable style four years ago. It was his only way of survival. So Rene Goulet, once a good guy, no more Mr. Nice Guy. And this is the story of how he became a bad guy. And I love that. Love that. You know, bad guy, good guy. That's great stuff. He says, I'm the one who's going to hit and kick first before the other guy does it to me. Yeah, you gotta... That's right, Mr. Goulet. You gotta take that uh, take that attitude here in the World Wrestling Federation. Uh, all right, so we've got the... <laughs> we've got the, you know, a very short, uh, uh, potentially exposing gym shorts. Uh, the $6... WWF Sportswear Gym Shorts, and of course, you can take those shorts to the gym in your WWF tote bag. $7 and $6, respectively, with $1 shipping and handling. This uh, is probably one of the earlier articles on Paul Orndorff joining the WWF. In fact, that footage, those photos are not WWF photos. Uh, this is when Paul Orndorff made his debut. So Orndorff, we think of Orndorff as an 84 guy. Uh, Orndorff is an 83 guy. He came in in, uh, you know, very mid to late 83 and uh, did, a few, did a few shows on TV as just Paul Orndorff. And then in 84, uh, Roddy Piper started uh, accompanying him to the ring. And uh, watching a lot of the uh, WWF Championship of Wrestling, Paul Orndorff was an extremely stiff wrestler. Extremely rough on the, uh, on the poor job, job guys. Uh, it looks like Tito Santana is dominating this program. He's, uh, this is a, uh, so Santana writes a letter to Don Morocco. All right, so this is a open letter, December 1st, 1983. Tito Santana writing to Don Morocco, of course that's a legitimate letter that Mr. Santana sat down with a pen and wrote. Guaranteed. 100% legit. Truly. Uh, some photos. Uh, what are these? Eight by, oh, 8x10s. A whole bunch of uh, 8x10s for, uh, for each uh, superstar. I don't know if they're color. I don't think they're color. I think we have 8x10 uh, black and white photos of your favorite World Wrestling Federation superstars. All right, there's that. That's that. So that's the... Uh, then when then we have Snooka against uh, Slaughter. So that's good guy Snooka against just... just heel Slaughter. Suddenly turning face around... Uh, around February... January, February of 84 is the uh, slow Slaughter face turn, which becomes uh, a hard push when he gets into a major confrontation with the Iron Sheik. All right, so I dug out one of my uh, arena sheets. Let me get it. There we go. And let's take a look. This is WWF Championship Wrestling from the War Memorial, Rochester, New York, Wednesday, November 2nd, 1983. Uh, there was no show in December or January, so I'm guessing that this program had this uh, match sheet in it. Uh, match number one. Uh, we were supposed to have Swede Hansen against uh, Butcher Vashan. Swede Hansen is crossed out. Now, this is cool. Like, people would look at this and go, oh my god, it's destroyed. You know, they, they wrote all over it. No, I love this. Somebody sat in the seat and wrote all of this down. And then look at this. They even put a key. They got a key here, right? Disc. Disc is disqualified. Okay, just in case you didn't know. Counted out of the ring 
is C period O period. Uh, pinfall is a PF, okay, and double disqualification is double disc. And, and I can certainly appreciate the detail that went into uh, this very professional scorer of the arena card. I would love to know who this is. All right, what do we got? We've got uh, Sweet Hansen not on the card. He's replaced by the Tonga Kid, and the Tonga Kid defeats Butcher Vashan with PF. Uh, the Wild Samoans uh, with number one crossed out. So Afa, Afa is not in Rochester tonight. We've got Sika, Samu, and Don Kernoodle. Uh, taking on Tony Atlas, Tito Santana, and Rocky Johnson. So, so far we've got two no-shows on the card. Uh, it's oh, That was a two out of three falls battle, and they gave us some details. It says, Samoans and Kernoodle are disqualified for the first fall. Johnson pins Kernoodle for the final fall. Hmm. Uh, that's not a two out of... Th oh, yes, it is. Uh, dis Samoans are disqualified, and then... Uh, Johnson pins Kernoodle. Of course he pinned Kernoodle for the final fall. Very cool. I love how this person gives me these awesome details. Uh, that was the second match. Let's see. When we've got uh, the masked superstar is taking on Tony Gurria. And they have... So the masked superstar wins by pinfall. But our friend here took it upon himself to let us know that the masked superstar is a moron. Yeah, you see that? Uh, and then they, they let us know that Tony Gurria almost won. See that? So the Masked Superstar is a moron, and Tony Gurria almost won. Uh, a very surprising match. We've got Jimmy Snuka versus Magnificent Morocco. Uh, surprising that it... Uh, no, it's not surprising. That's the wrong word. A an awesome match. Jimmy Snuka and Morocco were having incredible, bloody brawls. All around the circuit. No difference here for the War Memorial. Uh, Superfly Snooker defeats Morocco by CO, which, if we go up to the key, is count out. And then in your main event, Bob Backlund defeats Sergeant Slaughter by disqualification. Now, I think there's, yeah, there's some stuff. Oh, wow, look at this. All right. We've got some continuation here. Match number two, Swede Hansen. Defeats Bob Bradley, so they switch Swede Hansen with Tonga Kid, and then put him against Bob Bradley. And then in the in, in the third match, Rene Goulet gets the win over Nick DiCarlo, who was a Toronto guy, and who would do shows in Buffalo and Rochester. Um, Rene Goulet defeated him, and then they have the announcement for December's card. So I was wrong that there is a card in December. The Vish, uh, we've got Vashan versus DiCarlo, Carnoodle versus Tonga Kid, Gurria versus Goulet, Bob Bradley versus Iron Sheik, Jay Strongo versus, versus Iron Mike Sharp, the Samoans and Albano versus Belomo, Johnson, Snuka, and Buddy Rogers. Wow. Great stuff. All right. So there's the uh, November 2nd, 1983. World Wrestling Federation at the Rochester War Memorial. That is all, ladies and gentlemen. A good night now.